Hi guys, welcome to the last video, which is the wrap-up video for this week, which was uh, the topic that I chose on music piracy. So in Neil and Dave's video, they both mentioned that a lot of uh, blockbusters have been like closed down and like I know it's the same here, like we had I think three in the area that I used to live in and now they're all closed. Um, I think that uh, Dave also made the good point that the need for like having a physical copy of something is still out there, but I feel like most of that will probably move to online sales for stuff like that instead of having like a retail outlet. Neil made a comment that uh, hipsters and vinyl and whatever, and I don't think I'm a hipster, but I have a lot of vinyl because we had like a really old fashioned record player when I was young and my dad and my mom had like a lot of really good music like David Bowie and ACDC and Led Zeppelin and like that's the music that I started with but so I still have that kind of nostalgic uh, feel towards vinyl so when bands that I like like Real Big Fish they recently well not recently I guess they release a lot of their music on vinyl as well as like digital format and CDs and everything and just for like the feel and to use on my record player I always end up buying the vinyl I really like the point that Dave made as well about uh, streaming services being uh, what he uses and everything and I definitely do think that's... I know like for the states though they have a lot more stuff that we have available and I know just from living in LA for the six months you guys have a lot more places that offer Wi-Fi and stuff like that if you don't have data already on your phone so streaming music is a lot easier but uh, here in Canada we don't have that many places that offer free Wi-Fi and I know for streaming services you need that and like our data is very expensive here. But I do think with the way uh, cloud systems and like streaming services work, I do think that's the way of the future because if you just pay one fee, then it's nothing um, like illegal really going on. You're still paying to use that service, which will then go to the record companies. The only downfall then that I see from this is that uh, Neil mentioned that people want more money and I think with a streaming service, unless it's kept at like a reasonable rate, like like what's Netflix, like $8, $7, $8 or something, unless it's kept reasonably low, people won't subscribe to it or want to pay for it if they can get it for free. And I think that's the big issue then. But I do think uh, fines that are like massive for, like what's the one that I found? This one. Joel Tenenbaum had to pay $675,000 for 31 songs that he downloaded and shared it back in 2007. I think stuff like that is just completely ridiculous. But um, I do like the idea of possibly moving um, more towards like less uh, physical stores like HFV, Walmarts and everything and going into streaming. But also I can see unless it being reasonably priced which is agreed upon obviously by the artists, the record companies, and then the services, uh, the like companies that offer the service, unless they can agree on some price that would also be attractive to consumers. I don't know if it's really gonna work out, especially if they can get stuff for free. But we'll see how it goes. I am really interested to know what the rest of you guys think. If you want to chime in, just leave a video response or a comment down below. Hopefully we'll get Robin in on this soon because I feel so bad for him out in Germany. Uh, he doesn't have any internet connection, but hopefully in the coming weeks we'll have his input as well to the Congress. So next week Dave will be choosing the topic that we are going to discuss. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's topic and I look forward to discussing more with you next week.